Coming via Gosfield Village Shop, one of the most recent ventures in our village, opened earlier this year, the first project of the Gosfield Community Interest Company, run by and on behalf of members of our community. Let us pause briefly to reflect. God of creation, bless all who work in this building and those who come to buy in it. May it be a place of care and honesty, justice and kindness, so that all who enter it may glimpse something of your kingdom. Amen. Moving on and passing the pavilion, we can see that a football match is due to start. In the high summer, of course, this would be cricket. And what a strange game that is when you come to describe it. You have two sides, one out in the field and one in. Each man that's in the side that's in goes out and when he's out he comes in and the next man goes in until he's out. When they are all out, the side that's out comes in and the side that's been in goes out and tries to get out those coming in. Sometimes you get men still in but not out. When both sides have been in and out, including the not outs, the winner is declared, if there is one. How's that? At the turn of the season from summer to autumn, let's pause for a while to think about our village in summer. The following words were written by Charles Dickens in Oliver Twist. They could so aptly apply to Gosfield. Spring flew swiftly by and summer came. And if the village had been beautiful at first, it was now in the full glow and luxuriance of its richness. The great trees, which had looked shrunken and bare in the earlier months, had now burst into strong life and health. And stretching forth their green arms over the thirsty ground, converted open and naked spots into choice nooks, where was a deep and pleasant shade from which to look upon the wide prospect, steeped in sunshine, which lay stretched out beyond. The earth had donned her mantle of brightest green, and shed her richest perfumes abroad. It was the prime and vigour of the year. All things were glad and flourishing. Let us give thanks for our community in Gosfield. Lord God, you have taught us that we are members of one another and that we can never live to ourselves alone. We thank you for this community of which we are part, for all those who share with us in its activities and for all those who serve its various interests. Help us, as we have opportunity, to make our own contribution to the community and learn to be good neighbours that by love we may serve one another. For the sake of Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. We've crossed the playing field, passing the memorial to US Captain Wendell J. Kelly. In 1963, his aircraft suffered engine failure and crashed in a nearby field. Captain Kelly heroically steered the craft to avoid the village and school and sadly ejected too late to survive. And reaching Hall Drive, we are now outside Gosfield Community Primary School, one of three schools in our small village. It is appropriate that our second reflection is on education and learning. Such a wonderful gift and opportunity open to us all, regardless of our age. The Book of Proverbs is probably the most down-to-earth book contained in the Bible, which is in itself a collection of 66 books. Written by King Solomon, the central message is that growth in wisdom is the real prize to pursue. 
Let us reflect on the purpose of that book, set out in the prologue, in verses 2 to 7. For gaining wisdom and instruction, for understanding words of insight, for receiving instruction in prudent behaviour, doing what is right and just and fair, for giving prudence to those who are simple, knowledge and discretion to the young. Let the wise listen and add to their learning, and let the discerning get guidance for understanding proverbs and parables, the sayings and riddles of the wise. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge, but fools despise wisdom and instruction. And let us pray for those in education and all of us. Lord, grant to all who study and those who teach them the grace to love that which is worth loving, to know that which is worth knowing, to value what is most precious to you and to reject what is evil in your eyes. Give us all a true sense of judgment and the wisdom to see beneath the surface of things. Above all, may we search out and do what is pleasing to you through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. We have now reached the end of Hall Drive. We've passed Woodland, which was filled with bluebells in May. You may even have glimpsed one of the deer, so often to be seen shyly feeding amongst the leaves. We've reached a spot where we can see three important features of our village. Goldsfield Lake Golf Club, owned in 1989 with two courses, attracting golfers from far and wide to its idyllic parkland setting. We can also see the thriving St Margaret's School, founded as a school in 1946. The older part of the school buildings was originally the stables and coach house for Gosfield Hall. And we also have one of the entrances to Gosfield Hall. Originally built in 1545 by Sir John Wentworth 
and added to extensively in the 18th century. Over the years, it has seen a visit by Queen Elizabeth I, and early in the 19th century, it was home to the exiled Louis XVIII of France, who lived here with more than 350 courtiers and staff. Now it is a sought-after and busy wedding venue, with hundreds of couples choosing to start their married lives here in Gosfield. Let us pause for a while to reflect on the passage of time and how people and places change through the years, perhaps reflected in microcosm here. The school, with children starting their education, the hall, where people are making the commitment of marriage, and the golf club, scene of people enjoying their leisure time, perhaps especially in retirement from work. As the scene changes, so too does the season, and as we enter autumn, the first stanza from John Keats' Ode to Autumn would seem to be fitting. Season of mists and mellow fruitfulness, close bosom friend of the maturing sun, conspiring with him how to load and bless with fruit the vines that round the thatch eaves run, to bend with apples the bossed cottage trees, and fill all fruit with ripeness to the core, to swell the gourd and plump the hazel shells with a sweet kernel, to set budding more and still more, later flowers for the bees, until they think warm days will never cease, for summer has all brimmed their clammy cells. And so let us reflect and pray. In a world whose web of life is intricate and beautiful, save us, Lord, from carelessness and blindness. In a world whose creatures are so varied and vulnerable, save us, Lord, from plundering and cruelty. In a world whose waters are fresh and whose oceans should cleanse, save us, Lord, from wanton polluting. In a world whose forests protect our air and wildlife, save us, Lord, from the systems that drive us to destroy them. In a world whose fruits are rich and plentiful, save us, Lord, from waste and greed. Amen. As we've come across the field, we have had a fine view of St Catherine's Church. The earliest church on this site was built 825 years ago by Aubrey de Vere, 3rd Earl of Oxford. The present church was built by Sir Thomas and Lady Rolfe in 1435, at a time when Gosfield was described as a great town by church commissioners, having 240 communicants. There have been other alterations and changes over the years, one of the most recent being the graveyard extension which was consecrated for use by the Bishop of Colchester last year. Noticing the field we have crossed, which yielded its crop of wheat early last month, we see the next crop is already growing. We are so fortunate to live in a temperate land where the soil is fertile and yet when seeds are sown, the mystery of how they grow is often taken for granted. Let us reflect on Jesus' words likening the growing of a crop to the growth of God's kingdom. Mark chapter 4 verse 26 He also said, The kingdom of God is as if someone would scatter seed on the ground, 
and would sleep and rise night and day, and the seed would sprout and grow, he does not know how. The earth produces of itself first the stalk, then the head, then the full grain in the head. But when the grain is ripe, at once he goes in with his sickle, because the harvest has come. And also, let us give thanks to God in words from Psalm 65. Heavenly Father, you visit the earth and water it, you greatly enrich it. The river of God is full of water. You provide the people with grain, for so you have prepared it. You water its furrows abundantly, setting its ridges, softening it with showers, and blessing its growth. You crown the year with your bounty. Your wagon tracks overflow with richness. The pastures of the wilderness overflow. The hills gird themselves with joy. The meadows clothe themselves with flocks. The valleys deck themselves with grain. They shout and sing together for joy. Amen. And finally, we walk back along Church Road to finish at the hall where we began. We thank you, Lord, for your generous gifts to us. Your works are wonderful. In wisdom you have made them all. Forgive us for the madness that abuses the earth for short time ends. And give us wisdom to cherish and share with daring and delight the abundant gifts of our fragile planet. Amen.